Welcome to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. Welcome to episode number 22 of the Workbench After Hours podcast. Today we got a cool topic. We are talking everything AR-15. Seems to be America's most popular rifle. Seems like anybody that's into guns probably has one. So Hunter is kind of new to guns and he eventually wants to get an AR. So he's got some questions that he has that some other people getting into the platform might have as well. And then we're also kind of go and dive into talking about how it works, the different parts, and what you can do with it, so. But before we do that, Hunter, what are we drinking today? Today, because my wife and I ran to the grocery store and we had some frozen stuff in the car, so I was gonna go find a cool bourbon that we hadn't tried yet, but the liquor store I went to, unfortunately didn't have anything that we haven't either tried yet or that wasn't, you know, 70 to $80. So I was (laughs) like, all right, well, I saw this, I really liked Jameson when I was in uh, college. This is proper 12. It's an Irish whiskey, just like Jameson. Um, but it is um, Connor McGregor's brand. So I thought, well, we haven't been, we haven't tried anything too crazy since the Japanese whiskey, which yep. nobody was really a fan <laughs> of. But I thought, well, let's give this a shot, see how it goes. So. All right, let's try it. definitely got that irish whiskey taste mm-hmm. yeah. that sweeter like vanilla almost type note it's yeah. pretty good though i mean yeah. that's the first time i've actually had irish whiskey on the rocks so mm. you're used right. to shooting it eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah my birthday we went to kelly's down in westport which is a really really old irish bar and my dad and wife made me do shots of irish whiskey like, and then we befriended the people next to us. And then, of course, they found out it's my birthday and more shots. So the sh- shots just <laughs> kept on rolling of Irish whiskey. Anything interesting happened after that? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Fair <Okay>. enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. Definitely good to have yeah. a different bottle. And- well, I mean, it sips nice. I mean, it's yeah. whiskey's whiskey. And then I also have a beer because... I don't know if you guys are experiencing this heat wave like we are, but it's been, you know, lower to mid 90s, but the humidity has been so high. Like, I think when I looked today, when I got off work, it was 91, but feels like 97 because the humidity is so mm-hmm. intense right now. So, yeah, whiskey for the show, but a cold <laughs> beer sounded way better to me. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know this this time of year is my busy season with my job, and I inspect a lot of roofs. That's like probably... 75 percent of what i do and yeah when it's 90 degrees and you know high humidity it just sucks yeah like you get off the roof and you're just completely drenched it's weird when you start sweating down the your shins that's how you know you're sweating hard (laughs) we'll be talking to somebody just at like afterwards or whatever and then like my forearms are just Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh my god Mm -hmm. sorry i'm just a sweaty guy i don't know what to say (laughs) yeah well anybody do anything in in guns this week or that's a no big fat goose egg (laughs) over here yep i don't i don't think i did anything either haven't i've been waiting on chris to bring his glock 19 over which he did tonight so i'm going to be doing a video on youtube hopefully this week or so and comparing the springfield hellcat to the sig p365 xl and then you got to have a Glock 19 because what's a gun comparison without bringing in a Glock 19? It's true. So, <laughs> yep, just wait everyone, on that. Everyone loves a Glock. Yep. So that'll be cool. It'll be a little three-way comparison then, huh? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to just have the Hellcat three-way. versus the... <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Gabe, it's three-way. Uh, everybody's got the... Or, so you're doing the Hellcat versus the what? The Sig P365 XL. And then so are you just going to... Basically, talk about the 19 as well or are you i'm just gonna, gonna that's it? gonna be a kind of a bonus thing because i'm mm. gonna compare the the main two and show like the differences and what each one has and because most people know what a glock 19 is or or its size i'm gonna just co- compare those other two to the size of the 19 so everybody has an idea yeah makes it a little bit easier because and i've had my eye on one of those p365 
so mm -hmm. yep the excel cool is a little bit larger and it, that way you it feels better in your hand mm -hmm. it seemed like everybody had the last couple of years a race to see who could make the smallest gun possible yet hold the most rounds yeah now that that's over with everybody's coming up with larger versions of those models that are more comfortable mm -hmm. in the hand yeah. so you have the 365 now you have the xl i think they have an x model and then springfield hellcat was like the smallest held 13 rounds and now they came out with the pro which is the little bit larger version mm -hmm. which you would think the pro would be the smaller version because <laughs> it's a lot more complicated to shoot they're, they're pulling an apple <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> It's the SE model. Yeah. And then what was that one pistol I was looking at? I think it was a shield. Yeah, the you were looking shield. the shield, but it was like a. <clears throat> it was slightly bigger, like we were talking, like with the Hellcat and the Spring, the 365 XL. Can't remember what what the exact model was. Yeah, but it was that same size size where it actually your pinky wasn't mm -hmm. hanging off the the end. Still both. I think it was still a single stack, right? I don't can't remember. I don't remember. It's been, a, it's been a hot minute. Yeah, it's been a long time since I looked at and that. Gun, gun business has been slow, so I haven't been selling so many guns. So, yeah, it's <laughs> been crazy. I need a gun show, but the local Oven Park one hasn't isn't doing it this year. So I got to drive at all the all way. this year? Yeah, it hasn't popped up at all. Hmm. You know what has popped up? What? A disc golf tournament that I will be playing on Saturday that <laughs> yeah. I signed up for last night. Yep. I know we always talk disc golf is not officially part of the <laughs> workbench after hours the WAP but <laughs> WAP <laughs> but since I talk about it all the time I some guy was talking about it it's down in Ottawa it's probably 30-ish miles south of here and uh, there's three open spots left and finally didn't have to be on the wait list for one I could just sign hmm. up and good to go nice nice there's two open spots left Chris <laughs> Chris is uh, on a break from his schoolwork right now. Yeah, it's been... What's going on with that? Well, it's finals week, yeah. and I'm a procrastinator, so <laughs> I like to do everything last minute, and so I'm doing two finals tonight, and then I got to do a big project, and it's due tomorrow by four, and I still got to do a final in that class too, so pretty much after this, I'm running home and just knocking out finals. I don't envy you at all. <laughs> I think we talked about this before, but I don't think I could. I've been out of college for so long. I don't think I could go back. You might actually be surprised because you're, you've developed a, developed a work ethic and like yeah. know how to get tasks done yeah. versus being, you know, that party party yeah. stage. But then like it's the homework aspect. Ooh. Well, I don't know. I think it's easier as I gotten older. Really? Yeah, especially with technology these days, like writing a paper I used to dread. But now that the app where you can hit function twice and start speaking and it types out your paper and then you just go back and edit it, you can knock out like a three, four page paper in 20 minutes. Yeah, we didn't have that when I was in Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's been nice. That's how I've been knocking out a lot of my papers, just sitting there, speak to text, type it all out, and then go find stuff to put in it. If they nice. had it when I was in college, I was not using it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep, he was partying. Yeah. He went to KU, so what do you do there? You party. Yep. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Right? Especially when your parents are really wishing you were at K-State instead. Then you got to <laughs> put in that extra drink effort. Drink that sorrow uh -huh. away. <laughs> uh -huh. I like... So I grew, I grew up like in KU. And if you aren't from Kansas City or surrounding areas, you're either KU or K-State. Even if you don't go to either one of those schools, yep. you got to support one. Like Chris and I went to Pitt State, which is a small D2 college in southeast kansas so yeah we went to pitt state but d2 we're not watching that not very often. football <laughs> baseball basketball or anything like that so we still are ku fans so you're either for ku or k-state and it's either you know, one or the you other support them or you're the enemy yep. kind of a thing yep but i will say as much as i like ku i like manhattan and the Aggieville area that it has kind of like a nice nice little bar scene down yeah, there it's like a it's like a square of mm -hmm. just nothing but bars and food and stuff yep whereas KU you've got Mass Street but that's a little bit farther away well it's a little bit of a way 
away from the uh the triangle which is like the hawk which is the underage bar and then the wheel and the and the bowl um so you had to do a little bit of walking if you wanted to go one or the other where Aggieville's all. Yeah, because proximity wise, KU, they're all further apart than yeah, 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 yeah. Aggieville. You're in like one. That's essentially what I was trying to say. Thanks. Block <laughs> yeah, Aggieville, it's all in like a square block. Basically, you can walk mm-hmm. bar to bar to bar, and it's nice. Yep. <laughs> Although I went back after college several, several times after college for some bachelor parties, and it's not the same. I was like, man, I'm too old for this because you know when you're in college your main goal is to go out and just get trashed yeah when we were there i'm like man i gotta pace myself (laughs) first of all we're here for a couple days so i don't want to feel like crap that you know tomorrow so yeah it was uh different still fun though some good the older part of town not in aggieville but a little bit further like the original part has some nicer bars that are for more older people (laughs) <laughs> like Chris and I. It's sad that we're starting to say old now. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, I'm old. Going back to a college town. Yeah. yeah. But, well, cool. Well, anything else you guys got? Nope. No, no. All right. Well, I guess we'll jump into our main topic, and that's everything AR-15. Everything AR-15. <laughs> yep. So, as Keith calls it, the trifecta. I'm at the bifecta right now. <laughs> I've got a pistol. <laughs> And a shotgun. So now I need the sporting rifle. Mm-hmm. And everybody goes with AR. It's all you hear about. AR, AR, AR. Keith certainly is an advocate for him, as Chris is as well. So I guess right off the bat, in your opinion, why are they so popular and, and why are they so sought after? I think the main reason is, one, they're, they're highly customizable. You can buy one from a manufacturer pre-built off the shelf, or you can build your own to however you want it. So you could spend $500 on one, you can spend thousands of dollars on one. There's so many different manufacturers of parts and kits and all this stuff out there that it's so easy to make it your own, basically. So you can mix and match those different parts. You don't have to buy all from one specific manufacturer. Yep, as long as it's for an AR-15 and because there's the AR-15 and the AR-10, which we'll get to, but as long as it's for the AR-15, it pretty much nowadays all kind of jives and goes together. And remind me again what AR stands for? Armalite. That's the first manufacturer of the AR-15. Armalite? Yeah. Mm. Armalite rifle. Hmm. Where's the... Oh, the rifle. Yeah. Is the, okay. Which was developed by AR Stoner. Yeah. Hmm. But if you listen to the news, they're going to call it an assault rifle. That's what they think it stands for. Right, right, right. Well, I was just going to bring that up. (laughs) uh, Bryce, who you've heard us talk about, he was was calling it an assault rifle. And I was like, I I know that's wrong. I cannot remember for the life of me what it actually stands for, the AR stands for. But I was like, I'm pretty sure an actual assault rifle is a fully automatic weapon. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the by term assault is, rifle is kind of made up by the media. I think that, and it's to scare people. Because what the, what the military has, the full auto version, is an M16. Yep. It is completely different than the AR-15, which the civilians have. Three-shot burst on Call of Duty. Ooh, <laughs> lethal. Oh, yeah. I would much M4. rather have, a, <laughs> have an M16. M4 but, carbine, right? Mm-hmm. That's the fully automatic? Mm-hmm. Yep. M4 and then M16. Mm-hmm. Whereas civilians, you, we can't own those, but most of us are going to be stuck with the semi-auto sporting yeah. rifles, the <laughs> AR-15. Yeah, so. And they're, the ammo for them is cheap. They're small diameter rounds, so they're just a step up from like a twenty-two long rifle, mm-hmm. so the little plinking guns. Um, and there's no, really, no recoil. You get a little bit of recoil, but not a whole lot. So they're super easy to handle as well. Mm-hmm. And they're just, once you learn about it, they're easy to maintain, shoot. So they're they're very simple and just, I mean. Yeah, I call them the Jeep. They're America's gun. Yeah, it's the Jeep of guns pretty much because everything's customizable on them. Everyone's got parts for it. Yep. <laughs> yep. So Hunter said the trifecta. I said, you got to have a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now that we know <clears throat> why 
they're so popular, but you keep talking about all these different parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's do a little breakdown of the actual parts that go into the, what what's the makeup of the AR? Right. So we're gonna go as if you were kind of building your own, kind mm -hmm. of everything you would need. You could buy, like I said, you can buy them pre-manufactured by you know whatever manufacturer you want to right off the shelf and they're ready to go. But for the purpose of this, we're gonna start with the lower receiver. That's basically the heart of the gun. That's the part that I'm gonna put up right here this is the lower receiver. So when you hear somebody say a stripped lower, that's what this is right here. This is basically the only serialized part on the AR and the only part that you have to go through a licensed dealer to get. So this is the one where you have to fill out the form 4473, pass a background check if you don't have a concealed carry license, and then any other part to this gun you can buy without going through an FFL dealer. So you can order it online, you can order it, you know, at a store, wherever. Just to touch on something you said really quick there. So if you have your conceal and carry license, you no longer have to do a background check when buying a new. Right. So you still have to fill out the form four four seven three that application, but if you have a valid conceal carry license, you don't have to go through a background check. How frequently do you need to renew? I think your it's like carry? every three years. Okay. So it's not, I just renewed mine and it's not too difficult, but it's, if I like to have it, especially if you're going to be transporting guns across state lines, yeah, sure, it's nice to have, sure, sure. but it's also nice to have if you are going to be doing a lot of gun purchases, Purchasing, yeah. it makes it quicker because you do have to go through a background check, get finger fingerprinted and everything for that license. So they figured if I guess if you have that, you've already gone through all the paperwork and stuff. You don't need to go through it again. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting when you said that. I wanted to make sure I heard that right because mm -hmm. you've sold Bryce now two guns in the last maybe two months within uh, within each other. And so I was like, well, when he's over here filling that out all again, I was like, wow, so that'd be pretty easy if you just go ahead and get your conceal and carry license. Yeah, and yeah. so he still fills out that paperwork. Yeah. And But I don't have to do that background check. Yep, yep, yep. He just does the paperwork. I take the number off his driver's license and concealed carry license, and basically that's Ready it. Ready to go. Good okay. to go. So yeah, that's that's it. But so that's basically the heart of the AR. The AR is this stripped lower. Okay. So you only have to go through a gun dealer for this, and then everything else you purchase wherever. Wherever. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then there's another receiver part, the upper receiver. So this is basically the part of the gun that's gonna hold your bolt carrier group and your barrel and handguard. So it all attaches to this. So this is where your bolt runs. So that that um, oval area. Oval area right there, that's kind of where the shell, ejects. the casing ejects and mm -hmm. everything. So this is the upper receiver. So this is a receiver set. You have your lower receiver and upper receiver together, and then you add everything to it. You okay. can buy these assembled separately as well, um, and then add all these parts. So I am gonna get that camera off of my face because we are, <laughs> for some reason, on... You're on the computer. Whatever. But, um, yeah. so this, these are the parts in that lower, strip lower, these are all the parts that go in it. So you have your trigger assembly. So basically you have your trigger, your hammer, that's gonna hit the firing pin and make the round go off, mm -hmm. um, your disconnector, bolt catch, your safety selector, and then all these springs and detents go within there to help make the parts move. So when you get a strip lower and you want to build your own, these are the parts kits that you buy as well. So it's called a lower parts kit. Okay. And all these parts go in that lower receiver. Okay. And so would you buy <clears throat> from a specific manufacturer, you'd buy all of the parts, well, you the parts kit for you it? You can, or if like... You don't want the, let's say you don't want that trigger assembly. You want to go with a different trigger, like a drop-in trigger ready to go. You can buy it without the trigger assembly. Mm, okay. And then you still get all the stuff you need, like your springs, your detents, and all that. And then you just buy your trigger assembly and drop it in, too. Okay. So it's it's really on what you want, <laughs> really, is what it comes down to. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. I So I'm a dealer with Aero Precision. I really like their products. They're based out of Washington State. And I've built, I don't know like well, around 20 of their rifles using their parts and I carry them through the business and 
I, I like them, they're awesome. So they they sell it in all sorts of different ways. You used to be able to buy full rifles for them, but with the pandemic and everything, really they sell parts now. But so they sell a lower parts kit that includes everything that you need, including the trigger. Or if you wanna get a different trigger instead of the mil spec trigger, the standard trigger that comes in all of them, and say you wanna get a match grade trigger or something, you can get a lower parts kit, like Chris said, without that trigger, and then you just buy a separate trigger. So that way you don't pay a little bit of extra money for a trigger you're not gonna use. Mm -hmm. You pay less for everything but that, and then you put it towards your trigger that you want. Okay, is there anything else you wanna show me on the anatomy? Um, Not of the lower, we got the lower parts. So this is another kind of exploded view with the grip. Um, so this just kind of labels more of the parts and kind of, I guess, where they go. What goes where, yeah. Yep, so where your spring detents go, your trigger and everything like that. So back here towards the back, that little loop, that's where your buffer kit goes. So your buffer spring, and we'll we'll get into that as well, but that's, that's where all that goes. Um, that is something else that you need to complete your lower to put the stock on. But as far as the internals, <clears throat> This is what it looks like. And it looks complicated, but it's really not. Once you yeah. do it a few times, it's it comes as second nature. Like I can do it without looking at any instructions or anything like that. And but are you saying detent? Detents. Detent. Yeah, they're the Detensifier, those, is that what the? Det those, little, those little guys right there, mm -hmm. those are detents. Is that an abbreviation for something or is that just oh, detent? That's what, they're <laughs> that's what, that's what the, the word is, detent. Okay. Yeah. It, it holds in a couple parts with the spring. Okay. Pretty so, much your breakdown pins, I think it is, and your safety are the only ones that really have those. Yep. So, yeah. So, when, you know that when you, the takedown pins to, to separate the lower and receiver, you mm -hmm. pull them, there's a detent in there and a spring that, the spring helps it move back and forth, but that detent helps it from popping all the way out okay the part and that also holds in your like chris said your safety okay so it's unfortunately you used to be able to find videos on youtube how to build those but you cannot i used to have them on youtube and they took them down so <laughs> that's how i learned how to build ars and all this stuff yeah. is from youtube yep <laughs> unfortunately I can't there's another channel um website called rumble which i've moved a lot of videos over to rumble I can post videos on how to build ARs over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start doing that when I get some time. So check out Rumble. It's not as anywhere near as big as YouTube, YouTube, but it's basically more of a free speech and they don't ban anything. I've been hearing a lot about that because <clears throat> I got into, I got pretty heavy into cigars for a while. Don't get me wrong, I sell into like what? Um, cigars. Okay. But I used to watch you know, because I couldn't figure out, like, guys would be like, oh, it's such a delicious cigar or blah, blah, blah. Because it's just like anything, just like drinking whiskey or whatever. You can taste different flavor notes and it. You might not, you know, you just kind of have to refine your palate to think about it. So I used to watch these cigar videos and then I've seen, like, I haven't unsubscribed any of them, but I've just seen on my feed all these videos, like, probably my last cigar video on YouTube, all this stuff. Because I guess anything tobacco related now is they're going through and just doing mass deletes on people's mm -hmm. channels. And so, anyways, just bringing that up because they're all moving all their stuff to Rumble, so. Yeah, it, yeah it's just like YouTube. Search, subscribe to channels. Um, we can monetize over there without meeting a minimum criteria. Unlike YouTube, you have to have a thousand subscribers plus 4,000 watch hours in a one year period, which can be hard to get if you don't have a ton of videos. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, so yeah, keep a lookout for that. And there are videos already on how to do it. So that's how I learned. There's other avenues to learn as well if you want to build your own. Hell, I'm sure if you got a gun a buddy that has gun nut, he probably can walk you through it too. But, <laughs> yep. Uh, so the other one, so as we had the upper receiver, this is a complete upper. So you'll see at the back there, is what was the receiver, the stripped receiver that we had there. But this is with the barrel and gas tube and block and handguard installed. So basically you just attach this to a completed lower. You still have to put, put a bolt carrier group and I don't think this has a charging, charging handle, handle there, yeah. but put those in there and then you're ready to go. So okay. this is for the most part, 
a fully assembled upper receiver. Um, the thing that makes the gun run, and you can't really see it, it's underneath that hand guard it's that attaches to the barrel. Yeah, it's the gas block and gas tube. And we'll show you how that works, but that just is what creates the function of the gun, basically. Okay. So again, this is arrow, arrow precision upper. <laughs> Love arrow. <clears throat> and then this is a complete lower. So you can build them to like look like this, or you know, there's a bunch of different styles out there, but you can buy them completed like this. And then if you have a, your own upper receiver, just put it on here, you're good to go. Okay. One thing to note though, when you're buying these, so if you buy a complete lower receiver like this or the strip lower like this, at that point, they're not considered firearms yet. They're a frame or a receiver. So they fall under the other firearms classification. So with rifles, you can go buy a rifle in most states, whether you're out of state. So somebody from Missouri can come buy it from me, a rifle, not a problem. If it's not fully built and you're buying just a strip lower or the lower receiver completely built, it still falls under that other firearm classification and you have to be a resident of that state to purchase it there. Okay. So, because it's not yet a functioning rifle, because you can still turn these into pistols, which we'll get into. So just keep that in mind. So if like you're in one state and you want to go to another big gun show in another state, if you don't have a driver's license in that state, you cannot buy from that dealer a strip lower receiver. You could buy a full rifle, but yeah. it's okay. stupid. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I found don't... that out the hard way. Yeah. So Chris and I did yeah. um, way before I got my license. We went to a gun show in Kansas City right across the state line, tried to buy our lower receiver, and they said we couldn't. Yep. And I lose so much business at gun shows because of that, too. I've seen that. I, the few times I've visited you, I'm a Missouri man. Well, sorry. Can't yeah. sell to you. Be like, now if you were to put these two together, like the upper and receiver, we'll build you out a rifle. Sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as that configuration, they're not a rifle yet. Okay. So, um, and so this right here is a, what would be a short barreled rifle. So the barrel, the upper receiver and barrel and handguard lengths come in all different sizes. The legal length for a rifle is 16 inches. So the whole barrel from where it attaches to the upper receiver to where it comes out has to be 16 inches or longer to be considered a rifle. Anything under is either going to be considered a short barreled rifle or a pistol, depending on how you set it up. And can you own a short barreled rifle? You can own a short barreled rifle. You just have to go through some extra paperwork. You have to um, pay a $200 tax stamp, fill out a form, because at that point it's considered a national fire, under the National Firearms Act as a short barrel rifle. So there's a lot more paperwork. It actually doesn't take that long to get. It's just more stuff to do and extra $200 mm -hmm. to. Yep. yep. And then whatever lower you put it on, you register that as a dedicated short barrel rifle lower. Mm. So a lot of people like to take, you know, say a 10 inch one to make it shorter. So if they're gonna use it for home defense, it's shorter to move around. You don't want that 16 inch barrel, you want one shorter. You can do that. But if you put a rifled stock on the back of it, like a solid stock that you shoulder, it's then a short barrel rifle and you have to go through that process. So, yeah. Topping them off. He's gotta get ready for those tests and stuff. Yeah. I gave him the eye before I started pouring. Yep. He said, all right, I can have one more to loosen me up to get this homework done. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> get through this boring podcast. Um, oh, Ooh, my gosh. That was a close one. I was going to hand this over to Keith. Oh, I'm good for right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's a short-barreled rifle. And then, so if you wanted to turn that into a pistol... <laughs> it's a huge workaround that the politicians are trying to go after. This, this right here is called a pistol brace. It is completely different than this stock right here. This is a rifled stock. It's solid. You put it against your shoulder. It's meant to be shouldered and you can't use it as a pistol basically. So any, okay. any solid stock like this, if you put it on a rifle, it has to legally be 16 inches or longer on the barrel 
or else it's considered a short barreled rifle and you got to go through that paperwork to get around that there is now a classification of a pistol ar and you still have the short barreled rifle short complete upper but you have to put a pistol brace on it and that is kind of a workaround real yeah. realistically it's a workaround um it was made for like a wounded vet, or, vet somebody. or somebody that wanted to shoot an ar but only had one arm and so they developed this pistol brace to where there's a velcro piece piece that he wraps around his arm and a, it's a stabilizer so that way he can shoot the the right. ar with a shorter barrel a lot easier and then they decided hey this is a way to make a pistol i mean it, it is a workaround but it's still bullshit that you have to that they're trying to go after it because yeah. a short barrel rifle you're not going to do any more damage or go, be able to conceal it any more than an actual rifle so pretty much anything new that comes out is gonna you're gonna have to fight against legislation to mm -hmm. make sure to I, it it doesn't make sense that you can't have a short barrel rifle you're you can't conceal it well, mm -hmm. that, they said that even if you had like if they really wanted to go after you in the sbr they said if you have the means to make one you can get charged with it so if you got a shotgun and a hacksaw in your garage that you use for woodworking you have the means to make an sbr they can charge you mm -hmm. so some punk ass shit right there <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so there there's a lot of <clears throat> hey real quick before we get going one of my questions specifically was, and we're kind of talking about it right now, but let's like narrow it down more specifically. When you're building your AR, what's specifically legal and what's not? Yep. So if you want to have a rifle, you have to have that 16 inch barrel or mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on where you're using it for, if you want to do long distance shooting or hunting, you know, there's 18 inch barrels, 20, 22. Um, I think I built a 6.5 Creedmoor and had a 22 inch barrel on it. The longer the barrel, the more accuracy and longer distance you're gonna be able to shoot. Mm -hmm. But the standard is 16 inches. Okay. The military typically is 14 and a half yeah. on their M16s and fours. But that's that's so that military. more because yeah. you're in you can be in a structured like a, a building close quarter combat. Yeah, easier, easier to clear. move around corners. Okay. But so if you have that if you built it like a rifle but you decide to put a shorter barrel on there that is less than 16 inches and you have that solid rifle stock you have to register it as a short barreled rifle okay. under the nfa act pay that 200 dollars tax stamp it's fine it's just then the government knows you have that whatever um to get around that and turn it into a pistol you can get one of these pistol braces that we showed earlier and as of right now it's legal to put on a rifle, uh, an AR with a shorter barrel than 16 inches and it's classified as a pistol. Okay. Um, and then this is what it looks like with that brace. So you still got the short, really short barrel on there and the pistol brace and you can't really see it. I couldn't, I didn't get a good picture, but on the back, it's basically got a hole where your arm goes through. Mm -hmm. So it's not solid mm -hmm. and they're technically not meant or supposed to be shouldered like you would a rifle stock everybody does it yeah. it's, it's like well, yeah huge workaround and there's not a lot of kick to it anyways right yeah, so yeah. if it's not yeah and that's a huge somebody found a loophole and was smart and the government knows that now so all the politicians are trying to go after that so at some point this year they're supposed to come out with a ruling on those pistol braces so it's going to be interesting to see how that changes things because millions of people have <laughs> purchased those pistol braces to put a shorter barrel on there. So it's interesting to see if they decide to make those illegal. Well, what's going to happen to all those people that How had, are they going to go about going after yeah, all If you yeah. have that, are you then a, you know, a felon basically and have to turn it in, which why would you turn it in? Or are you going to be grandfathered in or do you have to dispose of it and put a longer barrel on there? It's all kind of up and in then the air. And you have an FTA agent knocking on your door yeah. saying, "Hey, give it up or what?" <laughs> And the funny thing, like the ATF, the way they oh, define stuff did is I say so... F -A -T -F. <laughs> FTA, ATF. <laughs> yeah, FTA, ATF. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Keith. But we'll see. But as of right now, uh, what is today? I don't know. The Earth, 11th. May. May 11th, 2022. Those are legal to set up. And it's basically, I mean, it is a workaround. But um, this is what it looks like. 
And yeah, so mm. if you wanted to not use that pistol brace, again, put a solid stock on there. You just have to register it as a short barrel rifle. And then going along with those lines, um, for I guess the shot pad or like the trigger, you know, there's like triburst or fully automatic, all that stuff. That's all you'd have to go through a bunch of paperwork to get licensed for that. So, yeah, if you want to make... Let's leave full auto out of it. Okay. But there's like Triverse or there's the ones like... Anything that shoots more than one round in one trigger pull is considered a fully automatic. Full auto. So what's, what's Whether considered it's, a full trigger pull? Like what if you pull the trigger down and it fires and then when you release the trigger, it fires another round. Is that considered one trigger pull? That's, that's in question. Yeah. <laughs> so there are some... There are companies that make... <laughs> triggers that simulate a full auto but it's technically you're pulling the trigger once and the recoil of the gun it uses to reset and pull the trigger back itself it's a work <laughs> it's a workaround and okay okay i just was trying to figure out going like where that line that's is. another thing that they're currently going after okay um, i think rare rare breed triggers was one brand that they actually sent out a letter to every gun dealer and i got one too to where they're like hey if you have this pull it off your shelf, stop selling it, and then we're gonna come get it. And what are those specific triggers called, the ones that use the recoil? Uh, binary triggers. Binary. I think it's Franklin Armory. Yeah, there's, those. A, there's a couple of them that make them. But yeah, they're, and I've shot a couple of them. They're, they're hard to get used to and actually make it to where it's like full auto. But um, any, so, what it, so basically what it is, if you, you pull the trigger once, one round comes out and then you reset the trigger, and then you gotta pull it again, another round comes out, that's semi-auto. That's what every firearm mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that we have, so that's semi-auto. Anything else to where you pull that trigger, and even if just two bullets come out, like two rounds come out with that one trigger pull, it's considered a full auto, and has to be registered as one. Okay. Which is, again, stupid. Well, that answers the question for that. Because if you've ever shot anything full auto, you're going to be way less accurate than with a semi-auto. You're going to be way less accurate with a shorter barrel rifle, too. Yeah. The shorter the barrel, the less it's going to be accurate. The greater degree mm -hmm. for error. Yeah. It's, so, yeah, it's not like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a stupid argument that they have in whatever. These scary, scary black guns. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so I got kind of like an animation video that will kind of go through the show how Let's it actually it. works. So this is like a full auto, or not a full auto, <laughs> a fully <laughs> complete is. built AR-15. And it kind of has like, it. it's transparent so you can see the internals. So once you have it built, it shows like, once you pull the trigger, it, it shows the bullet coming out. And then also at the same time, the gas is going down the barrel, going up into the gas block, back through the gas tube, and then running the bolt back. So basically once it hits the bolt carrier group, the inertia of it pushes the bolt carrier back into your buffer kit, which is inside your stock. And then that springs it forward. As it's coming back forward, it picks up a round from the magazine, puts it in the chamber, and then again, pull the trigger, the hammer releases and it all goes again. So it's pretty cool. It's actually really cool to see in that video. So um, there's no sound, there's no sound to the video, but it's just pretty cool. So the bolt's going forward, feeding the round. You take the safety off, pull the trigger, the hammer goes up, hits the firing pin, and the gun functions that way. And then this is a shot of the bolt carrier go group going back into the stock or the buffer tube. So when you put a spring in, that's what's actually happening back there. Okay. And again, this is just it front version of it, the barrel there. So things are kind of cool how they are able to get such a detail in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in these videos. But um, forward a little bit to this one. Um, so this is the bolt carrier group. This is basically what runs the gun too. Inside there where these grooves are, where the bullet sits is the firing pin so when you hit that it goes forward hits the primer um and yeah so most ars are the direct gas impingement so this is what actually runs it 
I guess if you're listening on audio only, um, you can't really see this, but it's basically just walking you through how the function of the gun works. And so it struck the firing pin. So yeah, so once the bullet passes through down the barrel, um, and there's a lot of gas and pressures built up in, mm -hmm. in there. And so as it's traveling down the barrel, there's a gas tube. Um, there's like a small little hole at the top of the barrel. And then your gas tube goes around that. And then there's the gas tube right mm -hmm. there connects to. And that's what pushes the bolt yep. back to. The gases go through that tube back to the bolt. And then the inertia from that gas pushes the bolt carrier back. And that's where it kind of resets the trigger. And then when it comes back forward, it picks up the round from the magazine, goes back into the chamber, and then goes all the way around again. So kind of cool how, how that yeah. works. So I'm what sorry a cool if animation too. So unfortunately, <laughs> if you're listening to audio only, you didn't get to see that, but so check it out on YouTube. You're probably uh, a gun person anyways, if you're on audio yeah, only, probably. so you probably already know how yeah. all this works. <laughs> okay, but, so. But that's how it works. And with it being such a small diameter, round again there's not a whole lot of kick to it really especially the more crap you put on it the heavier rifle yeah. gets and that's the cool thing is there's so many different it's so popular right now there's so many different companies that make parts pieces and, and attachments and everything for these things that you know you can like i said you can spend 500 dollars on a basic mil spec one and when they say mil spec that's just basically what meets the minimum standard for the military so it's military Nothing specific great yeah. yeah you get like plastic hand guards plastic stock the triggers like five pounds and okay but you can up all these companies make after part after market parts and then you can just go to town go crazy and like what chris did you can <laughs> paint your own yep like paint it to any color you want so i think my first one i did a red and blue theme mm -hmm. so the whole uh stripped lower i painted it like metallic blue painted my trigger red and got anodized red like just hardware to match it and then the upper i did like blue hardware with it so yep i like it it was fun yeah so again customize it to any way you want and that's the cool thing is you get a glock and for the most part a glock's a glock yep when you get an ar you customize it to however you want to and make it personal all the way through and it depends on how you're going to use it so yep. and they make scopes as far as like sights, you can use the iron sights, the flip up sights. 45 can, degree angle sights. Yep, you can use scopes, you can use red dots, like all the you, thermal ones, night vision, all this stuff. You can mount flashlights, you can mount bipods, um, freaking yeah. anything. So, Slings, like, yeah, it's, so besides the obvious of, you know, the pros and cons of buying your own or buying a complete one and building your own, mm -hmm. Besides the obvious, one obviously comes together, one doesn't. Say you wanted to buy, like, I guess, are you saving money if you buy one that's already put together, but it's already kind of, you know, decently customized? Or are you spending more if you completely customize it yourself? You know, what does that run down? Because I've seen, you know, complete builds online, but they're, they've got all the bells and whistles to mm -hmm. it. Is that going to cost way more than if you do it yourself? Uh, generally, um, so if you do it yourself, you're going to build it to however you want to and use just the parts that you want. So say if you go and buy a Smith and Wesson, let's just say the basic Smith and Wesson one, if you're new to the error platform and you're not going to use it for a whole bunch of stuff, you just want to go shoot it and keep it stock as it comes, then that's fine. You, you know, spend six, $700, whatever they are, are now eventually down the road if you want to change anything out you can swap out the trigger anything you want to but that's not something that has to happen so if if how it comes from the manufacturer is how you want it then yeah go that route and you're good to go but if you think that you're going to want to change a bunch of things on it right away it might be more cost effective to build it yourself mm -hmm. because you're paying for a fully assembled up or, or rifle with all these you're paying for all the parts to just go and change them all out you're spending a lot more extra money okay so then if you do buy one that's super customized already essentially someone just took the time to source out all these you know maybe it's got the trigger symbol you want and 
uses all you know like the, what is it Terran Tactical or whatever mm-hmm. you know if you bought one of theirs they've taken the time to just do all the work you could have done yourself yeah and so if, now they're just going to be charging you for essentially their labor on top of all the parts yeah if that's if if you know that's how what you want then go that route because it's made in their factory probably going to have a warranty to it to where if you build it yourself generally not going to have a warranty if you screw anything up could have issues so if you're worried about that and don't get something set right you could have issues whereas if you buy it from the factory the chances of you having issues with with a gun a little less likely to happen plus anything does happen it's generally covered under the warranty but i mean yeah if they there's companies and even other dealers that make custom ars and they generally either build it spec'd out by a customer who wants it a certain way or just however they want to Mm -hmm. um, and sell it that way so that's when it that's when you end up with more than one ar yeah (laughs) (laughs) because you buy one and you like the way it's set up but then you're like well maybe i want these other things and where i have a spare say lower receiver sitting around or some spare parts and you're like well instead of swapping them out on this rifle why don't i just build a rifle another one with these parts yeah because i think my first rifle I went with I was like I'm not going past six hundred dollars and I that was my budget so I was sitting there piecing it out searching for the best thing I could for the price Mm -hmm. and it was possible and then the second one I spent a lot more money on but (laughs) yeah (laughs) but I still did it by pieces though that's the best thing I liked about it because I could buy this piece this month wait a couple months and then buy like the barrel that I want Mm -hmm. and whatnot or wait for a sale you know it's gonna drop Get and that buy, last get that piece play. on Christmas, yeah. and now you get yourself a Christmas Full, present. Yeah, and then you got your whole build done. So. <laughs> and if and if you do buy a pre-built AR, depending on who you buy it from, I mean, you could be getting a really high quality rifle. As is, you could still add, you know, a sight or whatever attachments you want to it. But like the main gun itself is solid. Like if my, if I were to ever buy another one, I would buy a BCM. Bravo Company Manufacturing. They are awesome guns. They are actually used in the military yeah, I got and some made for the stuff. military, basically. <laughs> and there's all these videos on there. Because you, you see videos of people that'll shoot a gun full auto just to see at what point will this gun fail and melt or whatever. Um, military Arms Channel does one where he's taken a BCM rifle, their popular recce one, and is doing like 10,000 rounds or, or like 5,000 rounds, thousands of rounds at a time, not cleaning it, storing it away, bringing it back out, not doing any cleaning, any lubrication, and seeing how long this thing will run for. Um, he's not doing anything crazy to where he's shooting at full auto because that's not practical. Um, yeah, if you shoot full auto for, you know, 5,000 rounds, you're going to have failure no mm-hmm. matter what gun it is. But He's doing it semi-auto, so he'll fire, you know, maybe a thousand rounds once, put it away for a while, take it back out, fire another thousand rounds, and he's the last video I saw. He was probably tens of thousands, thousands maybe, and nothing, and that's without cleaning it or adding any lubrication to it as well. So the BCM rifles are they are, they are good. <laughs> they're you know they're typical black. I mean nothing fancy about them but those you know are going to work yep whereas if you build it yourself you might screw something up might not be as reliable it's more fun to do it so that's that that is one thing if you know you want reliability maybe buy from a manufacturer okay last thing i have for you so i hear you know i don't even know the round size it's like three three something two two three five five six two two three five five six Mm mm-hmm What's the difference between that and then also what's the difference between an AR-15 and an AR-10? So, do you want to take the AR-15 and AR-10? So the AR-15 is a smaller round, it's a smaller rifle. It's usually your 223, 556, and you can buy like a nine millimeter and uh, what's the other one I was thinking of? You can buy a 22 long adapter for your AR-15. Your AR-10 is a lot bigger round. That's going to be your 308, 65 Creedmoor, um, 7.62 by what, 32, I think? I know it's, it's a weird round. It's a 7.62 by 
buy something, but those are going to be like a lot more kick, a lot. It's a high, more high powered round, pretty much than your AR fifteen. Okay, and a lot more expensive to build. Yep. It's, when you and you're saying that the the ten can shoot these different rounds, do you have to have a different? What do you? Is there anything you need to swap out to shoot these different rounds? Well, it just depends. Like a lot of them, you got to make sure the barrel's going to match the round you're going to shoot. Okay. So, so if you want to switch between the Creedmoor and the like a three hundred eight, I'd have to buy a three hundred eight barrel and a three hundred eight muzzle brake, and that's about it. Okay, and I can swap it out. This your AR fifteen, you can get a wild barrel, which will shoot both your five five six two two three round. Does you lose any accuracy when you do that? They're pretty much the same. It's just different grain, pretty much. You get better accuracy out of the wild barrel. Yeah. Better accuracy? Mm -hmm. And the grain is how heavy the bullet is, right? How much power, yeah. How much power or how heavy the powder? Grain is how heavy the bullet is. Okay. The bullet weight is measured in grain. So when you see a like a 55 grain round or on a casing or Mm -hmm. on a box, that's actually referring to the weight of, because I thought it was how much powder was in there initially. It's actually how much the bullet weighs. I remember you telling me that, yeah. Yeah. That's, they always show the powder on the back, so you assume that. Yeah, you, you, and that's what I thought for the longest time, but it's actually the weight of the bullet. Okay. Okay. So then, essentially, the two two three and the five five six, same thing, it's just a heavier bullet. One's a heavier bullet? So it they're different. They're like... <laughs> Microsoft. Yeah, they're it, really. Like, one, one, what's the point of that? Why is there? T- if one, they're so one's, similar, one's milita- a military round. Your five, 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 six is a five, mili- five, six NATO is military. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be a higher velocity than your two, two, three. Yeah, okay. generally, um, but the difference is going to be very minor. That's why most ARs or AR barrels can shoot both rounds. Gotcha. So as long as your barrel says five, five, six, two, two, three, or two, two, three on there, both of them. It could shoot either one. That's primarily where you're going to find now. Back, you know, several years ago, if it said 223, that's all you could shoot on there. But now that they're so popular, they're making barrels that shoot both. You can also get a barrel that shoots 223 wild, shoots both. Um, You could shoot 223 or 556 out of there. It's just going to be a little more accurate than your standard barrel. Okay. Generally, the difference is going to be price bullet weight is going to be a little dif- difference between the two and then your velocity. But 5.56 five, NATO is generally what the mi- military uses. And then the 223 Remington is what it is, is more, more of a varmint. C- civilian. Yeah, what they call yeah, you, a varmint round. Yeah, you shoot like... Damn varmint. Yeah. Coyotes. Like coyotes. Yeah. yeah. And po- then opossums. Yep. Hogs. And then with like the AR-15, you can swap out barrels and do different calibers. So like you can, the next popular one is a 300 blackout. So everything else stays the same. The only thing you have to change is the barrel and the muzzle device at the end of the barrel. Everything else. 300 blackout you said? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just a different bullet size then? Yep, yeah. it's it's in between an AR, a 223 round and an AK round, which is 762. It's kind and of in between those. Same magazine and everything? Or you, you, can, to- you can use the same magazines. They make dedicated 300 blackout magazines, which I prefer to use just smooth, just to, just to yeah. make sure there's no other hiccups. 300 blackout is was made to be utilized best suppressed. So I built one and that's what I run with my suppressor on. When we went on <laughs> the shooting day? Yeah. Okay. But then like with the AR-10, it's exact same setup and parts that are used in an AR-15. Just a just lot bigger. <laughs> beefed up because it's got to be able to hold up to a bigger round. Okay. So, and then with that, like Chris said, you can change out the barrels and shoot different calibers out of the AR-10 as well. So everything goes together the same pretty much. It's just everything's bigger, beefier, and more expensive. Yep. <laughs> and weighs a lot more because his, yeah. we compared a Five five six bolt carrier group to his three oh eight one and <laughs> it was a different animal. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So well there's a lot to it. Um but get into it. I mean if you're don't want to build your own or a little nervous to, then go buy one. Um buy one pre made by a manufacturer. Everything nowadays is gonna work. Yeah. Um back when you know, in the nineties, early two thousands, really you had Colts and Bushmaster were the main ones and adding different parts kind of caused issues but now they're so popular everything 
yeah. for the most part, it's going to work. If it's cheap, like if you if it seems too cheap, it probably is. Yeah. So spend the extra money, quality, um, for sure. But pay what you pay what you get for yeah. it type of thing. Yeah. Buy a full rifle. I mean, I love the Springfield Saints. I would probably buy one and not add too much to it. I've sold a bunch of those to some family members, and there are people that are into guns but not gun nuts so they're probably just going to keep it stock as is so there's a lot of great rifles that you buy pre-made by manufacturers that really don't need anything else done to it maybe out of flashlight or a different site but that's it they run well um and then if you decide to change anything you can change out the trigger you can change out any single part on there pretty easily <laughs> yeah yep okay well so. cool yeah i uh i pretended like I had a question about the stock one just for you guys, but I know Keith wouldn't let me get away with buying some off the off the rack stock. No, no if you want to buy something stock, dude, I would I would help you out. I would I would stir you away from the lower end ones like the BPMS and all that. Yeah, stay away from those. Stay away from this. Smith, Keith, you're just supposed to go along yeah. with what I'm saying and be like, yeah, <laughs> maybe I know. we should We're get him to get a BCM recce. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are paying for it. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I mean, Baby so, gift. so if you want to build one for about a thousand dollars, get the BCM Recce for another thirteen to fourteen, and then you got a freaking gun that's gonna run forever, kind of like an AK. It'll run in any condition. But yeah, lots to talk about. I don't want to cut you guys off short. Is there anything last thoughts you have on the? ARs or buy or one. anything? Buy one. When buy you buy one. one, build one. Yeah. You should own one. Okay. They're great. And They're not. If you build one, you'll probably get addicted and build multiple. Yeah. They're uh, referred to as adult Legos. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and that's what, exactly what they are. Yeah. 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 So they're awesome. Whether you buy, and you can buy them used too. So it, yep. however you want. So didn't answer everything but if you guys have any question journey thing there's a lot more to it we just kind of did the basics yeah, you um, get in depth real quick on barrels and muzzle oh, yeah. brakes and, yeah. well i mean you guys gave me the information that i needed to get started or at least get started on research you and know, honestly a, a place to begin it, and it's kind of like anything else you get what you pay for yep. so if you buy a bolt carrier group you could buy one for probably 75 dollars, or you could buy one for 300 you're going to get better so you probably want like the two fifteen to two fifty dollar two hundred fifty dollar one because you get the three hundred. <laughs> that's like, you know, anything. If they're the cream of the crop, they might not necessarily be the best, but the name brand makes them look the best, right, Chris? <laughs> yep. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah. So well, what's once, okay, once we, just kidding, once we okay. get <laughs> once we get into that journey with Hunter when he's ready, we'll kind of talk about it in a podcast and maybe do a video yeah. separately of you guys can follow along the the uh journey to my first day or my wife journey to your trifecta yeah <laughs> that's what we're gonna name it the series <laughs> my wife wants an ar and she but she wants hers like an emerald green which can be cool sounds cool yeah if it's never shot and it just looks <laughs> if it's hung up on the wall and looks amazing all the time all right I have to use the bathroom so bad. If right. they finish this out before I get back, uh, I'm sure they will. Whatever you guys do, just make sure you're looking out for that merch. That merch is going to drop soon. Look forward to look forward to it. It's going to be amazing. Yep, he's he's going to say that on I don't know how many more podcasts yep. until we actually do it. You should have gone behind me, bro. I couldn't. I got to do something. But well, cool. Do you have anything else to add to the? No, I think. I, I don't know. It just depends on what you want, really, if you want to build or buy. Yeah. But I went the build route, and I I was happy with it just because you can set up a budget over a year and build it, and you don't have to sp yeah, that's, put all that money down front. That's, yeah, we should have brought that up. That's if the one pro to building your own is you don't have to come out with, like, say, $1,000 at once, buy the strip lower that way you have it yep. and then you can buy all your parts as you can yeah and then you can either build it as you get those parts or wait until you get everything and then build it all at once yep the only thing when building it is there are some tools required and stuff like that but yeah especially when you get to the barrel you need a torque wrench yep yep but so. most people have tools in and around that can work they make dedicated tools for all the parts detail yeah. and stuff like that does make it a lot easier but not needed yeah. you can find ways around things mm -hmm. there's always other ways yep 
so that that is a nice thing is to, to buy the parts as you get them yeah. or get the money for them so that way you're not spending a whole bunch at once yep that's what i did with i think every ar built <laughs> and plus i think when you when the manufacturer sells a fully complete ar there's an extra 13 percent tax yeah on it so if even if you buy an, an ar from like say bcm they sell the full um rifles but then they also sell a full complete upper and lower if you buy the lower and upper separately, it's going to cost less because okay. there's not there's not that thirteen percent tax. Yeah. So that's the kind of a work way to get a BCM rifle. Just buy the part separately and yeah. save you thirteen percent. Yeah, so. I think that's really about it. With besides going into other details, but mm -hmm. yep. Oh, so. there's Hunter. <laughs> what up, bro? Yeah, still going? Yeah, getting ready to wrap it up here. We actually came up with a couple of good points that we forgot to bring up, but you'll have to listen to it to see what they were. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, folks. I was uh, full to bursting right there. Yep. So, one, th one thing we said is the, the advantage to building your own is you can buy the parts as you have money for it mm -hmm. versus coming up with a bunch of money at once for a full complete one. And then when you're buying a full complete one, there's generally a 13% tax on it, not from the gun dealer, it's from the manufacturer and the government, and they put an extra tax on a yeah. full complete gun. So, okay. so yeah, so any questions, you know, reach out to me to have a conversation down in the comment section, I'm trying to answer anything you guys have and, and or bring up on the next podcast as well. So Irish whiskey was pretty good, a lot, better than i thought it was going to be actually so it's super smooth i was worried yeah. about having it on the rocks but it's it's pretty, uh pretty good doesn't have the flavor as woodford has yeah but we could easily sit here if it was on the rocks and just Wood, drink Wood, way too night. many <laughs> yeah woodford man if we had i'm glad i'm glad you didn't bring that because if i we, actually would be drinking the whole bottle yeah. i was trying to but they were out of the original woodford they had woodford rye was all they had left and i was like i don't want to drink rye whiskey's a little <laughs> yeah so cool yeah well, we appreciate you guys tuning in to this 22nd episode. If you haven't noticed, there was a bonus episode. Don't go listen to it. <laughs> did you see that, Chris? I didn't. Cat did. Yeah. So <laughs> after the last... It? Embarrassing. I cut out about... For me. I cut out 30 minutes of film. <laughs> you should have just del <laughs> delete control delete that motherfucker. <laughs> well, cuz yeah, after after the podcast last week, we're like, we're not terrible. You know what? Cuz we were starting to have a, you know, talk about a bunch of stuff in the garage. I'm like, you know what? This is where podcast is all about. Why don't we go up and just keep talking, let the camera roll and we'll record. We ended up going for quality idea after several yeah. cocktails because <laughs> well, it, like I said at the beginning, the, a lot of the beginning was good. Um it was towards the end. You could tell Hunter was getting a little loopy. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Jeez. He was, uh, yeah. So I, I thought kinda... Keith tricked me. I thought we were coming up here just to edit and bullshit and stuff. He's like, let's just do, let's just do a quick run through of yeah. one. And next thing I know, I looked talking for an hour and a half. I'm like, yeah, you got to delete all of that. <laughs> I, I deleted about 30 minutes out of there, but I, I tried to edit it to where you can't tell there's stuff taken out mm -hmm. so i learned some tricks with editing at least on the video i don't know if probably won't be able to tell on the audio only but it was just kind of a bonus episode it was we called it 21.5 and then i half cut out after there hours. was a bunch of us talking like we were trying to figure out what to call it <laughs> stupid i cut a lot of that out <laughs> we told a couple embarrassing stories we told a few more but i took those out <laughs> um and yeah so yeah but it's still like 50 some minutes long. So check it out if you want to, you don't have to. It's kind of just a bonus episode. We were bored. It went out on Tuesday at 10 a.m. So um, this one will be coming out Friday at the normal time, 8 a.m. So yeah, well, appreciate you guys tuning in this week. And if you have any questions, gun related or anything else, just let us know. Have a good Friday. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get me.